Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to lesson number seventy from one of my textbooks, the Distinction Bound Student Grade Twelve. Right, we also have Grade Eleven and Grade Ten. Right, in the previous lesson, I gave you this homework. Easy. Differentiate uh, fixed cost from variable cost. Okay, I said it a thousand times. Fixed cost, costs that do not change. Variable cost, these are costs that change. All right, so you can pause the video and mark yourself. Right, quickly, let's go to monopoly. Now, a monopoly is a market structure that has one seller and many buyers. And this seller is selling a product that is said to be unique. So there's a reason why you will be the only firm in the entire industry. In some cases, you'll see that uh, by law, uh, you should be the only firm like in case of ESCOM, for example. Now, uh, what else can make you a monopoly? Uh, maybe you being a genius, like at this moment we're having this problem of COVID-19, and let's say you come up with a drug that can cure COVID-19. You'll be the only person in the entire world that knows how to make the drug. So in that case, you become a monopoly. So you start manufacturing this COVID-19 drug and people who, ha who have symptoms and uh, who are suffering from the, the disease, they, can, they, they take the, 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 the drug and then they test negative. So that means it, it becomes um, that disease which has cure. And you are the only business that knows how to make the drug. So in that case, you become a monopoly. All right. So you become the only firm manufacturing that particular drug, the entire world, okay? Right, you make a lot of money in that. Right, now what are the characteristics? Now when we look at these characteristics, remember I told you, we have to use this. So we are going to use it, because this is the classification of market, this is what we use. So you always want to hear this number of businesses, nature of product, entrance, control over price, information, and examples, demand curve, economic profit, decision making, collusion, productive and allocative, efficiency. All right, so we'll get to that one by one. Let's look first, number of firms. I've answered already, there is only one single firm, the entire industry. The next one is the nature of product. I mentioned it already, I said the product is unique. If that means it has no close substitute. The next one here is entry. Entry is restricted. Now it can be restricted by law. These are some of the things that can restrict people to enter the industry. For example, patents. Now patents are those rights that make you the exclusive producer or manufacturer of a product that you invented yourself. So you invent Let's say if, uh, okay, you know that in 2007, Steve Jobs uh, did a keynote where he was introducing the iPhone. And in that keynote, he, he, he was introducing the touch and he said, some cell phones out there, they say they, they are said to be smart, but they are not smart after all. And he, he introduced the touch screen and it was a breakthrough uh, invention by Apple. But now, Steve Jobs and Apple did not patent the invention. So it didn't give them the exclusive right to manufacture cell phones with a touch screen. So what happened after that? Many other cell phones started introducing, they copied Apple and they started producing cell phones that have touch screen. So Apple did everyone else a favor by not uh, 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 putting patents on the invention. You see that? All right. So if he had, it would make them, it would make Apple the only firm in the entire world that produces cell phones with a touch screen. And if the patent goes for 20 years, that was 2007, uh, it would end in 2027. Imagine. Okay, that would be evil, eh? Right, licenses. Like, okay, let's say you want to compete with ESCOM. Let's say you need a license. Problem is you can't get the license, so entry is completely blocked. Or the sole rights, or 
okay, I think the ESCOM one will be this one. They are the, they are the only ones that have the right to produce electricity in South Africa. The license one, you know, probably more or less the same. Import restrictions and so on. So these are reasons or that will cause these barriers to entry to exist. The next one is collusion. Right, collusion here we say it's impossible. Remember we say collusion is when firms can sit down and discuss ways in which they can minimize competition between themselves. Now, can ESCOM sit down with ESCOM and discuss how ESCOM and ESCOM can minimize competition between ESCOM and ESCOM? It doesn't make sense. So then it becomes impossible or we can say it's irrelevant. Information. Now, information is supposed to be complete. Where is it? Yes. Available. For a monopolist, all information on the market conditions is available. That means information is complete to both buyers and sellers. This means that there are no uncertainties. This uh, assumption also applies in case of the monopoly. Right, the next one is control over price. You are the only one making a certain item, so you are the price maker. The reason, so it means you are opposite a perfect because a perfect competitor is a price taker, you are a price maker. The reason is you are the only one. The next one is demand curve. Now the demand curve for this type of a market structure is like this. Okay. This is U. So this is U as the monopoly. Eh? This is your quantity. This is your price. If you remember those tables we did in the previous lesson, they gave us this kind of a scenario, a downward sloping demand curve. And I say it to you, D is equal to AR. All right. So your demand curve is downward sloping. And you can see how inelastic it is. Inelastic. Okay. When price changes, uh, quantity demanded does not change as much. You'll see when I compare this to monopolistic in the last lesson of this whole chapter. Right. Here, so, so I've explained the, what, the demand curve that is downward sloping. And already you can see, just like I said before, if output changes, it increases the price. If output increases, the price drops. So it depends on what. But, but now, the, the, the question is, how much should the monopolist uh, produce and again the same answer that's that is what makes um, the, the dynamics of perfect dynamics of perfect and imperfect markets the easiest two topics in the entire syllabus because the same rules that apply in imperfect they apply in perfect so we are repeating the same thing where MR is equal to MC that's your profit maximizing output we'll talk about that shortly Alright, so then output, I'm not going to talk about this and why, because look at that. They don't expect you to discuss output in the exam. If they ask you, that would be unfair because they didn't tell us to discuss it. No? Right. The next one is non-price competition. Should I talk about it? Maybe not because of that, but let me talk about it for uh, other reasons. Okay, non-price competition uh, is, does not exist. Here it happens in mainly oligopoly and monopolistic, in a way. They do non-price competition, which is competing on other bases other than uh, price. So they don't really say try to attract firms to attract buyers by reducing their price. They, because they, in oligopoly, their demand curve is kinked. So if they do that, they won't be able to make the most profit. Uh, so in oligopoly, they have to produce where the demand curve kinks. I will explain it when we get to oligopoly. But for now, I just want to explain the concept of non-price competition, which is, if you look at banks, they find other ways besides bank charges to attract people to bank with them. Uh, if we look at Capitec, um, they've gained a lot of uh, uh, people, who, you know, who bank with Capitec. So many people have switched their salaries to Capitec. One of the things people like about Capitec is if you already have a contact in your phone, um, then if you want to send them money, you don't need to ask for their account number. You just use their cell phone number to send them money. That's easy. 
and Capitec also charges 8 Rand uh, to, to pay and clear. So if you're paying someone who uses NetBank and you want that money to clear now, it's 8 Rand. NetBank does that as well, but they charge 10 Rand, but for uh, amounts that are less than 2,000, 2,000 or less. So if you want to send someone 2,500 and you have NetBank and that person has FNB, uh, they will have to charge you now more. But if you want to send, uh, do you see that they don't really compete on prices, but they have other ways in which they compete. So besides bank charges and all that, because there I'm talking about money, they could say, look at FNB when they started, they had this e-wallet thing. And now so many people came to FNB because of e-wallet. And now everyone else copied the idea. Uh, look at ATM deposits. I think FNB started. You could deposit money with FNB at the ATM, so you don't care about the their branch hours. So even if the branch is closed, you can still go and deposit money. You see, that was convenient. So these firms that are in oligopoly, they use non-price competition. They advertise. They come up with unique ways of you know. So people subscribe to FNB or Absa or for different reasons other than the, the bank charges or price. So that is what we call non-price competition. It's competing, it's trying to gain customers by using other ways besides price. So if you see with Monopoly, that cannot happen because you are the only competitor. Right? The next one is decision making. Decision making is independent because you are the only firm. So what you decide does not affect other firms because they don't exist at all. The next one is productive efficiency. Unfortunately, a monopoly will not be able to achieve productive efficiency as firms will produce at an output which is less than the output of minimum ATC. So they cannot uh, achieve productive efficiency. They cannot produce at the they, they don't have a competition, that's why. So they can do what they want. Unfortunately, again, these guys cannot achieve allocative efficiency. A monopolist can never achieve allocative efficiency. It will always produce too few of its goods or services and uh, will always charge too much for it or them. In a monopoly, entry is blocked and so the monopoly remains free to charge a higher price and produce at a lower cost. So that's what consumers really need. ESCOM might not be able to meet their, need, their needs because they have other things that they are worried about, which is making money. All right, examples, we have Transnet here in South Africa and we have ESCOM. Right, so here's your homework. Draw a comparison between perfect and monopoly. This is possible because we have done perfect already, but use price, use profit, use quantities and use cost. Alright, so this concludes the lesson and we'll see you in the next lesson.